basically there's a tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for us to be able to get uh, a small scale um, cottage industry type uh, fiber industry lifted off the ground here. And uh, a couple of years ago, um, I, I come from a small farm in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, and I, and I have a lot of nettle growing on that farm. And so a couple of years ago, we all got together around the topic of uh, fiber production and Atlantic Canada and what are the possibilities. And I learned, because I'm not into design at all or fiber ever before, except that I wear it, um, that nettle is a really uh, lovely, gorgeous fiber that can be used to make a beautifully designed products. So I thought, score, I'm trying to figure out a way to value add this nettle, this is going to be perfect. Well, live and learn that it's not that easy and uh, realize that, uh, that flax is something that actually has a lot more um, probably easier entry points uh, than nettles do. And I thought, you know what, on our farm, which is a community shared agriculture farm, we are growing uh, vegetables for people and I want to be able to grow clothes for people. And I think that in Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada, we can be growing clothes for people, uh, as well as all kinds of other products. Um, so uh, Leslie and Claire and I started working together and we ordered seed and this was the seed and you can see the rows there starting to come up of the flax this year. So I know nothing, like I didn't know if I should be calling it thread or yarn, I don't know about weaving, I, I, I really am as green as you can get when it comes to everything about how clothes have been made or how, how fiber is created, I didn't know any of the steps. So I've been learning a lot and I still don't know everything and I don't know anything about growing flax, but we just said, you know what, we're going to do this, we're going to learn and before we invest our four million dollars, we're going to make sure we can grow it. <laughs> So that was our first step this year, and um, and this is uh, the flax blooming. We have it, we planted it along the uh, along one of the farm roads where a lot of traffic does go by, and one of the things about agriculture for me um, is making sure that people are able to see it and to access it and to be a part of it by seeing it. And so the flax was planted in a place where people could see it, and so then it creates interest because there is not a lot of flax. It's growing in Atlantic Canada. Um, and so we planted two acres and every day you get a gorgeous field in the mornings, usually up until about noontime, of blue flowers. And it's absolutely beautiful, day in, day out. Even now, still, there's some that's still flowering. There's only one or two flowers per plant instead of you know 10 or 20. But um, it was so beautiful. Um, so in the 1st of August, uh, this is the two acres here, you can see from the road all the way over to where there's uh, corn. Um, we decided to start doing some test plots of harvesting. Um, I decided not to invest, you know, the fifteen or the $30,000 in a puller uh, because I wasn't sure how it was all going to work out. So I've decided that this year uh, it would all be done by hand um, and get a sense of what this process is. Uh, what the result is, and then we can strategically invest in the pieces of equipment that are the most labor intensive now and then move towards a more mechanized uh, production system. So this is not child labor, I think, when they actually are willing to help. Um, this is our son Isaac, and I had all of the kids out and also uh, guests who were visiting us from Kenya, and we were harvesting and tying and, uh, and uh, stooking it up to dry. On this day, we harvested, uh, in this little section right here, and I'll, you'll see another picture, we harvested 600 pounds of uh, flax. Um, and here's a, our harvest on another day, so you can kind of get a sense of how long the rows are and what the, the volume is. We have um, 16 bins. Here I am. So we may have harvested it far too soon, and for those of you in here who know about flax, you're probably looking at going like, you are really in trouble because that's going to be so fine that it's all going to break apart. Well, we'll live and we'll learn and we'll get some seeds and we'll have a lot of straw for all the animals, so it'll be okay. <laughs> um, but the, the, all the reading that I did was that once it starts to turn, once it starts to change color, uh, you know, in the bottom third starts to change color substantially, then to start picking it and to start uh, testing it. I knew it would take us a long time to harvest by hand. So I started a little bit early, and then by the end of the harvest, we have some that, that's, um, that's older. Um, but this, um, this is just me on harvest day. 
Uh, and here we are weighing it out because I wanted to be able to track. Uh, these are two people that I uh, was visiting and farming with in Kenya and they came to visit our farm this year so they helped out with the flax just as a coincidence. Um, and here's some in my kitchen this morning that's drying that's just going to hang out up there for a while to remind me of this project that we're working on. Um, and then here is a bin. Uh, so we took the seeds off, we rippled it with hand ripplers. It took uh, three people, uh, probably about mm, four hours, so about 12 hours in total for them to ripple a bin, a bin's worth of flax. And we have, uh, did I already say we have 17 bins? In, uh, in storage right now. If you, <laughs> my husband is also asking me, <laughs> what are you going to do with all of that flax? Um, and the reason I asked the question about the indigo is because I don't, I'm, I don't know right now how much we're going to be able to get from this. And there, are, there is some uh, information and there is some uh, research that says, you know, an acre will equal sort of this, this many bolts of fabric or this many Anyway, the, all of the language that you know and I don't um, about what it will yield. Um, but we don't know what that is for us. And so we need to start uh, getting a sense of that. So for me, it's all a measure of shirts. So I'm, I'm like, how many shirts can we get by December from you know, this, uh, this um, venture? And this is uh, the flax redding uh, outside of our house. It's been out there for a week. Um, and it has to be uh, turned and then uh, we'll leave it for another week. Um, and I do not have the expertise to know exactly when it's done, so I wish that Claire lived closer um, because she's up in New Brunswick and I'm in the Annapolis Valley and there's quite a distance between us, but um, we're just going to keep experimenting with different amounts of time. We're going to put, we have a bunch of ponds on the farm, so we're going to pop some, uh, some into a pond and, and test that out as well. And so really that's where we're at at the moment. Um, we came together, the three of us, because I think we do have a vision that it is possible for us to collaborate and it is possible for us to get something set up. Um, we are, we're, I'm experimenting before we're ready to sort of dive into any bigger investment, but we are really excited about the possibilities and I just really want to be wearing a shirt that was grown on my farm in December. And I'd really like to be able to... <laughs> I'm really hoping Gary can help out with that or some design students here somewhere because then we need a design. It's like, oh, but then what about color? I mean, how do you even get color into the shirt? Is it the shirt's made first and then you color it? Or, you know, so uh, huge learning curve and it's great to be here. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we need to be growing a lot more flax in Atlantic Canada so that we can uh, actually have product here that creates jobs. Uh, and, um, and, and has a sustainable, uh, um, a sustainable um, clothing option for us in Atlantic Canada. And we hope we need, to, we need to build a mill and we need to get a facility set up that's going to make it possible that if you have you know, 10 square feet out back and you'd like to process it and grow your own clothes, you can. <laughs>